Thank you for tuning in to this edition of the OCBOA instructional film series. My name is Steve Wanamaker, the instructional chairman for the 2020 season, and this week's edition is focused on horseplay slide rule. We'll start out by taking a look at the rule. This is rule 232, the definition of a slide. As we know, a runner is never required to slide. And we'll start out by looking at what a legal slide is, which can be either feet first or head first. If a runner does decide to slide feet first, at least one leg and buttock shall be on the ground. Uh, and what it doesn't say there is prior to contact with the fielder. Um, a runner may also slide a run in a direction away from the fielder to avoid making contact or altering the play. Next, we'll look at the elements of what makes a slide illegal. And if any one of these elements is present during a force play, then force play slide rule should be called. So uh, we'll start out with a runner using a rolling crossbody or pop-up slide into the fielder. Note that it says pop-up slide into the fielder and that not all pop-up slides are illegal. So if a runner goes in and performs a pop-up slide that is not into the fielder and does not alter the play of the fielder, then that pop-up slide is legal. Also, if a runner's raised leg is higher than the fielder's knee when the fielder is in a standing position, that would also be an illegal slide. This next concept is very important to understand for high school baseball. The rule states that it's an illegal slide except at home plate when the runner goes beyond the base and then makes contact with or alters the play of the fielder. So the simple act of sliding through the base and ending up on the other side of the base is not illegal. It's only illegal if when the runner slides through the base first makes contact with the fielder on the back side of the bag. So for instance if the fielder is on top of the bag and the runner slides legally into the bag and makes contact with the fielder on top of the bag and then ends up on the back side of the bag that is a legal slide. It would only be, be illegal if the fielder was on the back side of the base and the runner then slid through the base and made contact with the fielder on the back side of the base. That slide would be legal at home plate because it is permissible for the slider's momentum to carry him through the plate in a straight line, baseline extended, into the fielder. I actually added those quotes into the fielder because that is a legal play at home plate. Next, it would be an illegal slide if the runner slashes or kicks the fielder with either leg, or if the runner tries to injure the fielder, or if the runner on a force play does not slide on the ground in a direct line between the two bases. And what we mean by in a direct line is his entire body, his feet, his legs, his trunk, his arms, his head, everything in a direct line between the two bases. And that's the one that we really need to look out for as we're officiating on the field. So if any of those elements of an illegal slide are present during a force play, what is the penalty? So the penalty is the runner is out, interference is called, and the ball is dead immediately. On a force play slide with less than two outs, the runner is declared out as well as the batter runner. All other runners shall return to their bases occupied at the time of the pitch. We've talked at length about how interference in high school baseball, as a default, runners return to their bases at time of interference. Force play slide rule is an exception to that rule, where runners will return to their bases occupied at the time of the pitch. If on a force play slide violation with two outs, uh, if that happens, then the runner who interfered would be the only runner declared out. This first play is an example of a runner not sliding in a direct line between the two bases. You can see right there he ended up on the side of the base where the fielder was fielding the, the uh, throw from the second baseman. You can see it right there, definitely not in a direct line between the two bases. In fact, I'm not even sure the shortstop had his foot on the bag when he received the throw. 
Uh, in this case, force play slide rule, it looks like it was not called. I do believe that force play slide is the correct call in this play. The fact that the runner may have been safe because the fielder was off the bag and the fact that a throw was not made to first base, none of that is relevant. The fact that the slide was illegal on a force play makes this a force play slide rule violation. This next play is a good demonstration that force play slide is not always completely obvious at the moment that it happens. Right here you can see this is a great angle where R1 goes sliding in just barely outside the confines of the base but his feet, legs, trunk, arms, head are not in a direct line between the two bases. The second base umpire recognizes this and does call force play slide violation. I think if he had to do it over again, he would not have called the out that quickly. He would have taken in the entire play and then made the call uh, by calling time before he had made any kind of safer out call. Uh, but an excellent job by the umpire to recognize that the fielder did not slide in a direct line between bases, called the uh, runner from first out, and then uh, what you can't see, of course, in the video is the batter runner being called out as well. This is a great example of a rolling or cross body type of slide. The runner actually starts to go in legally, but then ends up with his body kind of across the base. His head actually hits the fielder here. You can see right there. When you're the base umpire and you see a runner's body in that type of position, you should definitely be thinking force play slide rule. This is absolutely an illegal slide and something that the base umpire should pick up and needs to be called. This play is a great example that force play slide rule doesn't always have to involve a slide. In this case, the runner goes in standing. He ends up on the side of the base that the fielder is making the play from. As we read in the rule earlier, a runner can certainly go in standing, but he really needs to avoid the fielder and avoid altering the play, which means running away from the fielder. In this case, and this is a, a real good angle, you can see the runner going into the bag. He ends up trying to duck, but he ends up going straight into the fielder and altering the play of the fielder. This is a force play slide rule violation. R1 and the batter runner should be out on this play. You can see right here where the base umpire points, makes the call, great call of force play slide rule and an excellent application of the rule in this case. This next play is a great example of a pop-up slide. This is an illegal pop-up slide because it's into the fielder. You can see right here he goes in, does a slide, everything's legal right up until this point where he pops up into the fielder. He actually ends up getting hit in the helmet with the throw. Um, this is definitely a force play slide rule violation in high school baseball because of the illegal slide by R1. This is a great angle right here. You can see him get hit as he's popping up into the fielder. Force play slide rule violation. This next play is a great example that not all force play slide rule violations happen at second base. They can happen at third base and at home plate. In this case, we've got R2 really going far outside the base to slide into the fielder. Very easy force play slide rule violation to call from this angle, but it's something that could be unexpected. So we got to keep our eyes out for it at third base and home as well. This next play happens with bases loaded, so it's a force at the plate. The runner comes in and slides. He's actually ejected for malicious contact, which I think is supportable but also debatable. You can see right there where he comes in. Earlier we talked about that a legal feet first slide is with one leg and buttock on the ground. This is an illegal slide because he goes into the catcher and makes contact before he has a leg and buttock on the ground. This is an illegal slide. Because it's a force play, it's a force play slide rule violation. R3 is out, and the batter runner is out as well. Thank you for watching this edition of the OCBOA instructional film series. Please keep your eye out for future videos.